Welcome to lecture 8 of module 4 in database management system. Uh, today we are uh, continuing with the properties of relational decomposition. Uh, in the last uh, video we have discussed the two properties which are attribute preservation property and also discussed the dependency preservation property. We have also seen a problem related to a dependency preservation property. So today we are going to discuss the third property on the relational decomposition which is non-additive or lossless joint property okay which is uh, it is uh, represented as non-additive or it is also known as lossless okay non-additive or lossless joint property so what is a non-additive or lossless joint property suppose we are having a, a relation r that relation is being decomposed into sub relation r1 r2 and R3 okay etc up to R. okay so non-additive or lossless joint property states that uh, this uh, decomposed relation decomposed relation R1 R2 R3 is actually follows the lossless joint property if the join of the sub relations will be equivalent to the main relation R that is if we try to join these three relation R1 join this is a symbol for join r2 join r3 okay must be equal to our main relation r okay this is the this is called non additive or lossless joint property okay so a given sub relation given sub relation is said to be in lossless or non additive joint property if the join of the all these sub relation will be equal into the main relation r okay that is a definition for non additive or lossless joint property clear so let us see the uh, explanation in detail if a relation r is decomposed into sub relations r1 r2 etc up to r okay so we have main relation r it is decomposed into sub relations r1 r2 r3 etc up to r then the decomposition is lossless okay the decomposition is said to be lossless if the natural join of the decomposed relation r1 r2 etc up to rm is same as that of the r okay so this sub relation sub relation is said to be lossless or non additive if the join of all these relations would be equal to r okay natural join means the joining joining of the decomposed relations or uh, sub relations will be same as that of relation r okay so this is the property this is called non additive or lossless joint property clear ah. so a non additive or lossless joint property ensures that no spurious tuples are generated when the natural join operation is applied so when we uh, when we join uh, these uh, th these three sub these uh, sub relations okay this non additive lossless join property ensures ensures that there will be no spurious tuple so spurious means spurious means unwanted there will not be any unwanted tuples when we join these uh, sub relations okay if the if it is having any unwanted if it is having any unwanted or spurious tuple then that sub relations will not be following the property of what non additive or lossless joint property okay appo uh, ingane sub relations join cheyumbol avade unwanted aayittulla allengil spurious tuples tuples varan paadilla angane vannittundengil adu endu follow cheyunnilla it will not be following this lossless property or not uh, or this lo, uh, non additive property okay that is what it is saying the non additive joint property ensures that no spurious tuples occurs are gen or generated when the join operation is applied to the relation okay join operation cheythu kaiyal spurious tuples varan paadilla angane anengil spurious tuples vannu kaiyal this uh, is not satisfying the property of what this uh, what this uh, non additive or lossless okay uh, let us see an example so this is the main relation r okay so we are having uh, this information abc is having three attributes 
this main relation is, is being decomposed into two sub relations r1 and r2 r1 is having attributes a b r2 is having attributes b and c okay now we are going to join these two relation and check that this uh, this join of these two relation will sa will satisfy the loss just join property okay we are going to check that so how we are going to join these two relations okay so this r1 and r2 we will join them okay so first of all in order to join these two uh, relations we must check whether any attribute is in common between these two relations okay each under relation in common attribute is b <coughs> okay but b is what we join okay so how to join these two relations okay first we check first we take the first attribute okay 1 1 okay first row will take 1 1 okay now we will check whether anything is starting with 1 in the r2 relation here it is starting with 1 okay so the first tuple will be 1 1 1 okay the first tuple will be 1 1 1 okay now again we will check anything is starting with 1 in the next relation yes here it here also it is starting with 1 okay so the second tuple will be the second row will be 1 1 2 okay second relation second tuple will be 1 1 2 clear ah, next 2 1 so this is complete this is complete so no, there is no other uh, 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 values is has starting with 1 okay only two values are starting with 1 okay that we have written it here next 2 we are taking the second row second row and we we will uh, we, we told that we are connecting these two uh, tables using the common attribute b okay so this uh, 2 1 into 1 we want we are going to check whether anything is starting with 1 here yeah this is starting with 1 okay so we will join this one 2 1 1 is 1 1 will be the next tuple <coughs> again anything is starting with 1 here yeah this one so the next tuple will be 2 1 2 Le, uh, 2 1 2 that also over now 3 2 anything is starting with 2 here this is not starting with 2 this is not starting with 2 but this is starting with 2 so this will be joined so 3 2 1 will be our next double next we will take 4 3 anything is starting with 3 here yes it is starting with 3 here so the next double will be 4 3 2 so 4 3 2 ok so we have joined these two uh, relations into this one ok now in order to check that whether this joined relation is equivalent to this one ok in order to ensure that this is lossless uh, this this property this uh, sub relation ensures lossless uh, property we must uh, we must see that these two this joined relation as well as the main relation are same is it same no 1 1 1 1 1 1 is, is there 2 1 2 yeah 2 1 2 is here 2 1 2 is there 3 2 1 3 2 1 is also there 4 3 2 4 3 2 is also there okay so this second row and the third row are actually unwanted tuples okay so this is called a spurious tuples so people and the sample which you unwanted tuples carry one only spurious tuples carry one that under okay so this does not ensure so we can confirm that this does not ensure lossless joint property because this unwanted tuples has been encountered here okay because 1 1 2 in the row in the row you would have on top yeah 2 1 1 on top yeah so these are unwanted tuples so this r and this r1 join r2 is not equivalent okay clear ah, so this is uh, so this uh, this property this uh, uh, relations will not satisfy the lossless joint property either and equal and equal and equivalent angle matra me namak lossless joint property namak ensure in patithullu okay this will not satisfy our lossless joint property in order to say that a decomposed relation is a non additive or lossless we have three properties these three properties need to be satisfied okay so in order to if you want to say that a decomposed relation r1 and r2 r1 and r2 
has the lossless property or a non additive property then it must satisfy these three conditions what are the first condition the attribute of r1 and union attribute of r2 is equal to attribute of r that is the union of the attribute uh, the union of the attributes of the sub relation must be equal to the attribute of the main relation okay so that is the first condition clear next condition is what next condition is the attribute of r1 intersection attribute attribute of r2 must be must not be empty that means that there must be a common attribute between the r1 and r2 r1 and r2 must be having a common attribute that is compulsory okay that is what it is saying attribute of r1 intersection attribute of r2 must not be empty okay the third rule third rule says that r1 intersection r2 forms a super key of either r1 or r2 okay so the relation r1 and uh, intersection r2 will give a super key that super key may be belonging to either r1 or r2 that is compulsory okay nammal intersection cheythu kittumbolulla attribute ennu parayunnathu must be a super key that super key must be belonging either to r1 or r2 okay if the above conditions are satisfied only the decomposition of the r is a lossless decomposition ee moonu properties satisfy cheyal mathrame endu parayan pattathullu nammala decomposed relation is lossless ennu parayan pattathullu lossless or non additive ennu parayan pattathullu clear so a decomposed relation d can be said to be lossless or non additive if the if all these properties are satisfied only if this, all these properties are satisfied first one is attribute of r1 union attribute of r2 equal to attribute of r now attribute of r1 intersection attribute of r2 must not be empty that is it must have some attribute in common the third property is that the attribute which is common must be a super key of either r1 or r2 okay these three properties need to be satisfied okay let us see an example for this this is the main relation r it is having five attributes a b c d e okay so this r1 is uh, divided into sorry sorry this r is decomposed into two sub relations r1 and r2 okay r1 is having three attributes a b c r2 is having three attributes c d e okay now let us check this condition so first condition is what r1 attribute of r1 union attribute of r2 is equal to attribute of r is it satisfying what are the attribute of uh, r1 which is abc okay abc what is the attribute of r2 cde what is abc union cde which is equal to abcde okay so all the attributes the union of the attributes of r1 and r2 is same as that of r okay so that first condition is satisfied clear now next condition what is the next condition the attribute of r1 intersection attribute of r2 is not empty okay so what is the attribute of r1 r1 intersection r2 we are having c the attribute c in common okay attribute c in common so we say that the attribute of r1 intersection attribute of r2 is not empty we are having a value that is c so that is also satisfied now third condition third condition is what the attribute of r1 intersection attribute of r2 okay having some uh, some, uh, val some value and that value will be a super key of either r1 or r2 okay appo ibada r1 intersection r2 endana it is c okay this c is actually the super key of this r2 okay c is actually the super key of r2 because this c is used to identify each and individual record in this r2 so c is a super key here okay so three conditions are satisfied clear so when we join these two relation we'll be getting the answer we'll be getting this answer so this is equivalent to r okay so r1 join r2 is equivalent to r 
So we can say that this decomposed relation is lossless or non-additive. Clear? This is the condition. Okay. So when this R1 and R2 is joined, we got this answer which is equal to R. So this means that this R1 and R2 decomposed relation R1 and R2 are lossless or non-additive. Clear? This is the property. So this is the explanation for these three uh, what uh, properties. So these three properties need to be satisfied. Only then we can say that the decomposed relation is lossless or non-additive. Okay. Now let us see a problem based on uh, this uh, non-additive or lossless decomposition. So consider a relation R P Q S T U. Okay, so we are having the main relation R, which is having attributes P Q S T U. So what is P Q S T U? They are attributes. We are having five attributes. So this relation is having functional dependency P determine S, Q determine S, S determine T, T U determine S, and S U determine P. So these are the functional dependencies for this relation R. Now they are saying that the R is decomposed into sub relations that is R1 P comma T, R2 P comma Q, R3 Q comma U, R4 S T U, R5 P E. So this re uh, this decomposed relation, this main relation R is decomposed into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 sub relations. Okay, so we need to check whether these subrelations or decomposed relation is lossless. We have to find it out. Okay, for that we are having, we have to follow certain steps. We are having a proper algorithm for that. Okay, so I will uh, explain that algorithm with the help of an example. Okay, ah. so first what we do is we will create a matrix. In that matrix, we will write the we will write all the uh, required uh, decomposed relations in the row okay we will write the decomposed relation how many decomposed relations are there r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 okay that will be written here r1 p comma t r2 p comma q r3 q comma u r4 stu r5 pu this will be written here okay so in the column, in the column we will write all the attributes in the main relation. Okay, in the main relation, how many attributes are there? P, Q, S, T, U. P, Q, S, T, U. That will be written in the column. Okay. So in the row, we will be writing the what the sub relation. In the column, we will be writing all the attributes. Okay. Also, we will mention for each. Uh, we will represent for each column we will represent what a symbol for this column the symbol is a1 for this column which is a2 this column which is a3 this is a4 and this is a5 okay clear ah. so first we have to fill this uh, table first we have to fill this matrix how to fill it the first thing is uh, wherever we are first we will uh, check each and every row Okay, in, in each and every row, for the first relation, sub-relation is P comma T. So, we will, uh, we will mark the symbol A against P as well as T. That is our first task. Okay, so here R1 of P comma T. So, we will write the symbol A1. So, here in this uh, row, we have to write A1. Okay, so this column, you have to write A1. This column, you have to write A4. Against P and T, against P and T, we will write the symbol A. Okay, so here for P, P we will write A1 and for T, we will write A4. Okay, so that is over. Now, next, R2 of P, Q. Okay, so for P against P, we will write A1. Against Q, we will write A2. So, why A2? Because this column is represented using the symbol A2. <coughs> So we will write A2 here. Clear? Next is R3 Q comma U. Okay. So against Q, I will write what? What is where is Q? This is Q. Against Q, I will write A2. Against U, I will write 
a5 okay see here here the a symbol is a5 why because this is represented this column is represented as a5 okay now r4 s t u okay against s t u i will write the a symbol clear ah, where is s this is s so i will write a3 okay so this column is represented as a3 now for t i will write here a4 for u i will write a5 clear next is r5 p comma u okay so against p and u i will write the corresponding a symbol so for p i will write a1 here for u i will write a5 clear ah. so now we have filled all the a symbols so after filling all the a symbols the remaining uh, spaces remaining spaces will be filled with the b symbols with the uh, b symbols having the position of that part, uh, representing the position of that particular cell okay so here we have written a here a symbol this also we have filled with uh, a symbol okay so the rest of the fields are actually the rest of the cells are empty here in this column in this row so that will be filled with the, the symbol b followed by the cell position okay so here this it was it was blank here so i have put the c b here and this b with the followed by the position of the cell what is the position of the cell this is the first row and second column that is why i have written here b 1 2 clear so what is the position here here i have not written a here so i will write b followed by the position what is the position of this cell the first column third column sorry first row third column that is b 1 3 okay what about this one this is b the first row fifth column that is why b 1 5 similarly you have to fill all the unfilled uh, a symboled a symboled cells with the b b uh, what b symbol followed by the corresponding cell position so here it is b 2 3 like, uh, second row third column here it is b 2 4 second row fourth column here it is b 25 second row fifth column okay similarly this one b 3 1 third row first column here third row third column here it is 3 4 b 3 4 third row fourth column clear here it is b 4 1 fourth row first column fourth row second column here it is all filled with a here what about this one yeah this is fifth row second column b 5 2 fifth row third column b 5 3 fifth row fourth column b 5 4 okay so we'll, likewise we will fill all these a symbol as well as b symbol okay so first task is we will fill the a symbols by looking at the attribute in the sub relation after that we will fill after that we will fill all the leftover space with the b symbol followed by the cell position okay now we will check if any or any of the row any of the row is filled with a completely if anything is uh, any of the row is filled is filled completely with a no okay if any of the row is completely filled with a then we can say that this decomposed relation is lossless okay that is the concept that is written here if any of the row is completely filled with symbol a then it is lossless but it is not here it is not lossless okay so we now we have to take each and every functional dependency and do a perform a, an operation now what we do is we will take each functional dependency each functional dependency and check whether this if the LHS is having a symbol then this RHS can also be replaced with that a, a symbol okay that means that we are going to replace all the B symbols the required B symbols with the A symbols for that we will take each and every functional dependency and we check that if the LHS is having uh, what uh, a symbol then that RHS will also be replaced with that a symbol okay I will give an example explanation for that let us take p determine s i will take the first functional dependency p determine s 
Okay. Now, what is LHS here? LHS is P. So, look at here P. So, uh, in the first row, the first row, this LHS is A. LHS is having A symbol. Okay. So, P determine S. So, the RHS is S. So, what is the RHS here? This RHS is actually filled with the B symbol. So, this B symbol can be replaced by A symbol. So, P determine S no P is deriving S. P is determining S. If the P is having uh, the A symbol, this S can also have A symbol. That is the meaning. Okay. Here, this P is having A symbol. So, this S can also have A symbol. Okay. So, I will replace this B13 with the A3. Okay. A3. Clear. I have replaced this B13 with the A3. Clear. Ah. Now, this has to be followed for each and every row. Ella row ilu idu cheyanam. Okay. P, P ilu uh, uh, A symbol undangil. Adha namal S ne namal A symbol akkanam. For each row. For this row I have completed. Now, check for the second row. Second row also. The P is having, LHS is having A symbol. So, we can replace this uh, RHS also with the uh, a, a symbol. Okay. So, here it is. B23 can be replaced by A3. Okay. So, why we have put A3? Because this column is a, can be represented only using A3. And the symbol is A3. And this column represents A3. Okay. Ah. So, first row, second row is over. Now, third row. So, third row, the LHS is not A symbol. It is B symbol. Okay. So, we don't have to look at the RHS. Okay, we can leave that one. Okay. Ah, next, fourth row. Fourth row also, the LHS is not A symbol. That also can be left out. Now, the fifth row. The fifth row, the P is actually, the P means LHS is actually what? A symbol. Okay. So, RHS can also be replaced with the A symbol. So, I have replaced this B53 with the A3. Okay. A3. So, I have made three replacement here. Three replacement I have made here. Clear? Ah. Now, I will take the next function and dependency. Q determine S. Q determine S. Ah. So Q determine S. So, here the LHS is what? LHS is Q. So, where if the LHS is having A symbol, then S can also be replaced with this A, A symbol. Okay. So, Q determine S. Okay. Q and S. It is compare end. So, you take the first row. The first row, the Q is, L, the Q is uh, what? B symbol. So, we don't have to look at the RHS. We can leave it. Now, here. Here it is. Q determine S. The left the LHS is A symbol. RHS, we have already made it uh, what? A symbol. So, we can leave it. Now, this one. LHS is A symbol. RHS can be made A symbol. Okay. Ah, so, it is A3. This also is A3. Okay. The third row is over. Now, fourth row. Fourth row. Q determine S. The LHS is B symbol. So, we don't have to consider it. We can leave it. Here also, it is LHS is what? Uh, B symbol. So, we can leave it. Clear? So, we have made all the replacement here. Clear? Next symbol, next functional dependency is S determine T. So, S determine T, the LHS is S. Okay, if the LHS S is having A symbol, T can also be replaced with that A symbol. Okay, the S T, S and T. Now, so look here. S T, here S is A symbol, T is already A symbol, so no, no issue. Here S determines, here S is A symbol. Okay, S is A symbol. So, T can also be S symbol. So, T can also be S symbol. So, it is represented as A4. Le. So, it is represented as A4. Okay, A4. Ah. Similarly, for the third row. The third row, S is LHS. L, uh, sorry, uh, S, LHS is having A symbol. So, RHS must also have a symbol can be replaced. So, this becomes A4. Okay. Ah, so, that also 
uh, is complete. Now fourth row is already LHS and RHS is uh, a symbol, so no issue. Now for uh, fifth row, uh, fifth row, the LHS is uh, what? LHS is uh, uh, a symbol, so RHS can also be made a symbol. So this can be a four. Okay, so we have made four replacement here. Clear? Ah. Next functional dependency is T u determine s. Okay, T u determine s. T u determine s. So T u. So we have to take. So both T and u must be having a symbol. Only then we can replace s with that a symbol. Okay. Ah. So what is T u? This T u. Okay. So here T is uh, having a symbol but u is not having a symbol so we can leave that okay here t is having a symbol but u is not having a symbol so we can leave that both t and u must be a symbol a symbol only that we can replace the uh, that date a, a symbol with the s okay now look at here third row t and u are a symbol okay so what about s S can also be replaced, but it is all already being replaced, so no issue. Okay, T U determine S on the left. Well, T U determine S, but T and U both are A symbol. So S, S is also we have made it uh, what uh, A symbol, so there is no issue. What about this one? T U. This also no issue. What about here? This also no issue. We have all made it uh, all right. Okay. Now, next is what? Next is SU determine P. SU determine P, sorry. SU determine P. It means that both S and U must be having A symbol. Only then we can replace this P with the A symbol. Okay. Now, so SU, we have to look both to S and U. Here S is A symbol, but U is not A symbol. So we can neglect that. Here it is S is A symbol u is but a b symbol so we can neglect that here s is a symbol u is also a symbol okay so s u determine p s u determine p so here s is a symbol u is also a symbol so a can be replaced p can be replaced with a symbol so this p can be replaced by a symbol that is a1 this is a1 ah. next S, this is uh, S U. The, here it is uh, A symbol. Here also it is A symbol. So S U determine P. Right? So this also can be replaced by A symbol. A one. Okay. Ah. Now look at here S U. Sorry. Look at here S U. Here also A symbol. Here also A symbol. S U determine P. P is already a symbol, so we don't have to make any replacement. Clear? So all the uh, replacement has been done. Now we will check whether any of the um, row is completely filled with the a symbol. Any of the row is completely filled with the a symbol? No, this is not filled with the a symbol. Still, it is having b symbol. What about the second row? Second row, yeah, second row also is filled with the B symbol, not A alone. What about third row? Third row is yes, third row is completely filled with what? Third row is completely filled with the A symbol. Okay. Any more? Any more rows are there? No. Here also no. Only the third row. Third row is completely filled with the A symbol. So since if any of the row is completely filled with A symbol, then we can say that it is lossless. That is the concept. Okay. So finally, we have received, we have got a matrix like this. In that, the third call, third row, third row is completely filled with the A symbol. Okay. Now, replace the result and matrix Okay. The result, the resultant matrix, the third row is containing a, all the third row containing the A symbol. So therefore the decomposed relation is lossless. Okay. So after making all these replacement, 
if you are not finding any of the uh, row is completely filled with a symbol then you can again start with the uh, replacement again from the functional dependency p determinants q determinants s determinant and so on okay pe edengile oru row il nammal a symbol replacement kandilla nundengile nammal veendum aadime nu thodangum aadime nu thodangi veendum ee replacement nammal cheyondirikkum okay this process will be repeated again and again until we find a particular row is completely filled with the a symbol okay so this is the process clear so this we can say that this decomposed relation is what decomposed relation is lossless or additive join clear ah, this is one example this is a university question and we are going to see another question okay this is the question that is available in your textbook ah, so here we are having three um, uh, this is the main uh, relation this is the main table and this is this is the decomposed relation r1 r2 r3 r is having uh, the attributes ssn e name p number p name p location hours this r1 is having this is employee details storing the employee details it is having uh, what uh, the attributes ssn e name r2 the project table having the details p number p name p location r3 work zone having details ssn p number hours these are the three sub relation okay ah. so as explained previously i will create a matrix okay that is the first task i have to make in the matrix the row the row represent what the row represent the each decomposed relation r1 r2 r3 okay and the column represents the what column represents the attributes in the main relation ഈ റിലേഷൻ മെയിൻ റിലേഷൻ്റെ എല്ലാ ആട്രിബ്യൂട്ട്സാണ് കോളത്തിൽ വരുന്നത് അല്ലേ ആ ദ റോ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് വാട്ട് റോ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ദ വാട്ട് റോ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ദ ഡീകമ്പോസ്ഡ് റിലേഷൻ സോ വി ആർ ഹാവിങ് ത്രീ ഡീകമ്പോസ്ഡ് റിലേഷൻ ആർ വൺ ആർ ടു ആർ ത്രീ ഓക്കെ സോ ആർ വൺ ആർ ടു ആർ ത്രീ വിൽ ബി റെപ്രസെൻറ്റഡ് ഹിയർ ഓക്കെ ആ സോ ലെറ്റ് എസ് ലുക്ക് എറ്റ് ആർ വൺ ആർ വൺ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് വാട്ട് എസ് എസ് എൻ ആൻഡ് ഇ നെയിം അല്ലേ ആർ വൺ കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് ദ ആട്രിബ്യൂട്ട്സ് എസ് എസ് എൻ ആൻഡ് ഇ നെയിം so against ssn and e name ssn and e name i will put the what the attribute symbol okay a1 and a2 so this attribute this column will be represented using a1 this is represented using a2 this is a3 a4 a5 a6 if you want you can write it at the top so this column will be represented as a1 this is a2 this is a3 this is a4 this is a5 this is a6 okay ah. so first r1 r1 is it is having the attributes ssn and e number so as against ssn and e name i will put the symbol a1 and a2 respectively okay now r2 r2 is having the attributes p number p name p location okay so against p number p name p location i will put the symbol a okay ah. so r2 so p number p number what a3 le a3 is represented using a3 p number p name p name is what a4 le p location thana a5 okay so against p number p name and p location i have put the a symbol a3 a4 and a5 respectively clear ah. now r3 r3 having three attributes ssn p number hours so against ssn p number hours i will put the symbol a, i will uh, put the a symbol okay ah, ssn against ssn i will put the symbol a1 next is p number p number against p number i will write the symbol a3 and against hours hours i will put the a6 okay so the remaining cells will be filled with the b symbol followed by its cell location okay so here what is the location of the symbol b 1 3 that is first row third column here it is b14 first row fourth column okay similarly i will fill the rest of the cells with the b symbol unfilled cells with the b uh, uh, b symbol unfilled aitulla a kaynittu a fill cheyidu kaynittu baaki varuna cells ini ne endu vechi fill cheyim b vechi fill cheyim okay clear ah. 
now we will check whether, whether any of the row is completely filled with a no no rows are completely filled with a so we will take each of the functional dependency and do the operation okay so first i will take ssn determines e name ssn determines e name so if the ssn is having lhs is having a symbol then this rhs will be also replaced with this what uh, the a symbol okay uh, so ssn e name so ssn is having a symbol so e name can also be replaced but his e name is already uh, having a symbol so we can leave it okay this is followed for each and every other first row is number of now i will follow with the second row second row is what the ssn is the lhs is b symbol so we can leave it so the third column third row the ssn the lhs is uh, a symbol so the rhs can be also replaced with the a symbol so that is why this b32 is being replaced with the a2 and b32 vetti ezhudekunnundo a2 okay so that is over next this one next functional dependency p number determines p name comma p location p number lhs il a symbol undengil that can be replaced with the p name as well as p location okay ah. so p number where is p number this is p number p name is this one p location is this one okay so here the p number is still what b symbol so we don't have to look it now look here p number it is uh, a symbol okay now it so p name and p location can be replaced with a symbol but it is already a symbol so we don't have to bother now the third row the p number it is a symbol so we can replace the p name and p location with the a symbol okay so p name i have uh, replaced this b34 with the a4 okay similarly b35 with the a5 okay so we have done two replacements now we will take the next and the final functional dependency ssn p number determines hours if the ssn and p number both are having a symbol then the rhs hours also will be replaced with the what a symbol okay now let, let us look at the first uh, row ssn p number ssn p number here ssn is having a symbol but p number is not having a symbol so we can leave it next is ssn p number okay here ssn is not having uh, a symbol so we can leave it here ssn p number the third row ssn as well as p number both are having what both are having a symbol okay so the corresponding hours can be replaced so the hour is already replaced uh, is already having a symbol so we don't have to bother it clear ah. now we will check whether any of the row is completely filled with a this is this row completely filled with a no it is having b is this row completely filled with a no is this row completely filled with a yes this row is completely filled with a okay so the final row 3 is completely filled with a okay so we can say that the uh, decomposed relation r1 r2 and r3 are what r1 r2 and r3 are lossless okay or additive join clear okay? so this three sub relations follow the property of additive or lossless join clear okay? this is the this is another question this is how we will compute whether the decomposed relation is lossless or not okay so this is a sure question for your university clear so we can discuss more university questions in the uh, coming classes okay thank you